If you're looking for an easy way to build your apps automatically, so basically an integration pipeline, then App Center might be the right option for you. Unlike other videos, we're not going to start with code. In fact, there's not going to be any code in this video. I think that is kind of a first, um, but we're going to head over to appcenter.ms instead. Um, whenever you go there um, and you haven't signed up for an account yet, please do that. It's super simple. It should be super simple and it's absolutely free. So there's nothing stopping you from setting up that account. In fact, everything that I'm showing you in appcenter.ms um, is for free. You can get started for free at least. There is some limitation at some point, but um, you know, if you're just a single developer testing this out, then you shouldn't hit that um, very easily. Um, whenever you land in the portal, you'll be greeted. Hello, welcome, Gerald Svetlaus. Well, in, in your case, there's probably not Gerald Svetlaus, else you walked into my account, which would be not great, but it should have your name in there. Um, and from there, we can add a new app. So let's just do that. Um, and here we can enter a name, which is which can be anything. It's just the name that you can find it under here in, in App Center. So let's name this Build Sample. Um, here you can specify the release type, which is not really important. Also just a label mostly. Um, you can select an OS. So you want to build for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS, TV OS, or even something custom. So there is lots of options here. I'm just gonna stick with iOS for now, I'm going to show you Android in a little bit as well. Um, although there's not much difference, um, then you have to select the platform. So you can even build native apps with this or react native Cordova, Xamarin, Unity, I'm going to stick with Xamarin, but it's good to know that all these options are here. So now we're going to do add new app. Um, and then we're going to land in this app, this getting started screen will help you get started, uh, especially if you're going to look into the diagnostics and the analytics side of things. Um, I have videos on that as well, it should pop up on your screen right now or find it down below in the video description. I highly recommend you watching those as well. But for now, I'm going to stick with um, building an actual app. So head over to the build tab right here. And what you can then do well, what you actually have to do is um, link up a repository. So you can choose Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket or GitLab, I'm going to choose GitHub right here. Um, my repository, my account is already linked. So I'm just going to get a list of all my repositories. If this is the first time that you're doing this, it's going to ask you to log into GitHub as well first, and then it will link you automatically. Um, so let's just actually search for App Center because I already did the other video. So let's do the App Center analytics sample, click that and it will um, um, get the, the kind of default branch right here. So it will see that the main branch is um, actually for these repositories, I don't have any other branches else you will probably see the other branches here as well. Um, but this just has the main branch. Um, and whenever we click that we can say configure build. So let's click configure build here. And then we're going to configure everything that is needed to build the application of the main branch and for iOS. Um, so what you have to specify here is the project, I think you could build a solution if that's what you want, but you can also select the iOS CS proj. Um, now the interesting thing is that this um, sample actually has iOS and Android, but it automatically detects which one is the iOS one, right? So it doesn't even show you the Android one. Um, so that's perfect, you can't go wrong with that. Then you can say the configuration, so you want to do the debug or the release, or I expect whenever you have some custom configuration in here, that you can also select that one and you can build that from here as well. Um, the SDK version. So I think you should probably want to have this on the latest stable, which is this one at the time of recording. Um, but you can also select another one if you have any special needs here. Um, but mostly you can just keep these um, options here at the default and you can start building the Xcode version uh, also something that you can select. Now we also have here the build script. So App Center is kind of targeted towards um, just getting your first build ready, um, not too much hassle, not too much configuration or customization. But with build scripts, you can write bash scripts, um, with which you can still run unit test if that's what you want or customize other things about this build environment. Um, so there's still a lot of flexibility possible here, you just have to know some bash. Um, but you know, other than that, and I think if it's running on Windows, it's probably going to be PowerShell. Um, I think you have to name the build scripts a certain way, just add them to your repository story and um then it will be automatically picked up and ran as part of this build. Um, if you want to know more about that, please let me know down in the comments and I will answer any questions or maybe record a little video about that. Um, then we have the build type. So we can build something for a device or a simulator and kind of depending on what you select here, you also have to sign the builds because if you're going to actually build something for an iOS device, an actual physical device, um, then you have to sign the builds and you have to do all this stuff with the certificates. It's kind of out of scope for this video 
video, it's also kind of complex. So I'm gonna skip over that for now. Um, if you have any questions, please don't ask me. <laughs> um, it, is, it is kind of complex. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but I'm gonna stick with the simulator build for now, which is just a little bit easier. And then you can say the build frequency. So basically this is the trigger. So build whenever this branch has a push. So whenever you push something new to the branch, it will automatically trigger and it will automatically give you this new um, build of your application, or you can do things manually. Um, you can also automatically increment the build number from here, so you don't have to even worry about that. App Center will take care of that for you. You can do something with environment variables, um, test on a real device, that is also very cool. We also have a little test option here, which lets you do automated UI tests within App Center. They run on actual physical device, which is a very cool solution. Um, it only works for um, device builds because it run, runs on actual physical devices. Um, but what this does is basically it, it starts up the app on a physical device in that UI test thing that they also have here in App Center just to see if it actually boots up and if everything seems to be okay. Um, then in the, the little test tab on the left, you can specify the more um, um, extensive UI tests that you want to have. Um, again, if you want to see a video about that, please let me know down in the comments. Um, and also you can do distribute builds. So we also have distribute in App Center and you can automatically distribute new builds to beta testers or to actual app stores, to the Apple App Store or to the Google Play Store. You can do that from right here within App Center. Um, then here down at the bottom, I should probably get myself out of the way here. Uh, we have the advanced uh, little thingy. So you can uh, enable a build status batch, um, which will just give you a link to an image uh, that you can put on your repository so that people can see if your build is failing or succeeding. Um, so just a little thingy that you, you might want to add. Um, let me disable this sign builds here because that got enabled because I did the um, device build here earlier. Um, that is it. I can now just say save or save and build directly that lets you save and build. There we go. And it will automatically start building the application. So here you can see, boom, it brings me to a new screen. It's waiting to be built. It's now waiting for a device um, in the cloud that is going to be uh, provisioned for us. It's going to be available for us to actually start running this build that we requested right here. Um, you can see a couple of details here, um, the latest commit message. You can go to the actual commit here on GitHub. Um, and you can see now it's triggered, it's running. Um, so it, it started just now, launch test. We're not gonna do this, so this is gonna be um, not available. We can cancel it here if we want, and we can here scroll through all the output that is going on here. Now, I won't let you sit through this whole build because it's gonna take a little while, so let's just fast forward a little bit in time, um, and we're gonna see if this build actually succeeds. Okay, we're back. It actually didn't take that long. Duration two minutes, one second. So it didn't, I mean, it's not a very complicated app because it's a sample, but it built the app for us. Um, and you can actually go here now to this download button. You can download the locks, you can download the build. Um, so, you know, if you maybe want to manually upload it to the app store, you can do that as well. Um, or if you have the distribute option, um, whenever this is a device signed build, you can also click the distribute button and you will brought to the um, distribute little thingy right here in App Center as well. And it all integrates really nicely so you can just do the distribution from right here as well. That is really the power of App Center. You can use this all together if you want, but you can also just um, pick the bits that you want to use like build, then grab the, the actual version, the actual binary and upload that to something else if that's what you want. Or just, you know, do the build somewhere else and um, distribute with App Center. All stuff that you could do. Now, this was for iOS. OS, I promised you to also look into Android for a little bit. Um, now, like I said, it's going to be pretty boring because it's going to be mostly the same. So let's go back all the way back to my home screen here for my account. And I'm going to add another new app here. And I'm going to also name this build sample. Um, I should have maybe added the Android and iOS to this because so that it's clear which one is which. Um, it's kind of a funny thing within App Center. You don't really have the ability to group these apps together, um, especially if you're working with Xamarin Informs application, right? It, it's kind of one app, but it really isn't. Um, so that's why you have to have these two apps in this portal. Um, you know, it's just something that that's that's a fact of life. Um, so now for the OS, we're gonna change to Android and you can see that the platform now, if we're still wanna do native, you can do Java or, or React or Cordova, but we're gonna select Xamarin. Um, and then again, we're going to click here um, on add new app and it will add this new app, bring us to the overview page right here. 
Uh, and we're gonna again select build and hey, link up my GitHub. Um, so let's find another app center sample repository that I have in my account. I think I took the analytics one. So let's take the crash one now and see if we can get that to build as well. Um, you can see again, um, just the main branch is here. Um, click it, configure build and it automatically selects the Android CS project. So here you can select the solution. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, again, the configuration, but now of course the SDK version has to do with um, Android and not so much with the um, Xcode version and that kind of stuff. Um, build scripts is the same here. Build frequency, also the same here. If you want to build Android app bundles, just one click away, just put it on here and you will get AAB files which are optimized for every device. Also, you can increment the version code and all the other stuff basically here as well. Sign builds, now you have to provide some other values for the, the key store file uh, with a password and that kind of stuff, but you can still sign the builds here as well. And if you do that, you can do it, test it on a real device, distribute the builds and still get that build status batch. So let me click save and build. Um, it's right behind me in the image right here, but you've seen it in the other demo. Uh, the button is right there and it starts the build as well. Now, um, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna believe me. I'm a believable guy that this build will succeed as well. Um, and this is how you can start with building your application through App Center. That is pretty sweet, right? It is so easy to set up these builds. You don't have to configure anything if you don't want to, just to get a continuous integration pipeline going basically. So every time you push a change, it will build and you will know if your changes play nicely, if your app still builds, not just on your machine, but also on other machines um, and if everything just works. And you can hook that up to distributing from here automatically, run automated UI tests. There is lots of possibilities with App Center. So that's really great. I already mentioned it. Have a look also at the diagnostics and analytics video that I have for App Center as well. There is definitely other options. So, you know, this is just you're simply getting started for maybe a simple app that you got going on, maybe some side project that you're doing. Um, but if you have, you know, more extensive needs, if you have to have more advanced build steps in there, um, of course, another option is to go to Azure DevOps, which allows you to write your whole pipeline in YAML, get all those steps in there, write custom steps if that's what you want. But if you just need the bare minimum, just building um, and distributing your app, then this might be the right option for you. Thank you again for watching one of my videos. Please click that like button if you've liked this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It's just one click away down below here. Um, and for the rest, I'll be seeing you hopefully for my next video. Keep coding.